In the early hours of April 26, 1986, the world experienced a nuclear disaster of unfathomable proportions. In the heart of Ukraine, within the now eerily silent town of Pripyat, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant stood as a testament to technological achievement. But that day, it would become a symbol of one of mankind's greatest calamities. As Reactor 4's core erupted, it spewed a plume of radioactive material into the atmosphere, reaching as far as Western Europe, contaminating lands, waters, and the air we breathe. Let's put this into perspective. The Chernobyl disaster released up to a hundred times more radiation than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. This was not a contained incident like Three Mile Island in the United States where a partial meltdown occurred. No, Chernobyl was an explosion, a violent and devastating release of deadly radioactivity. In the immediate aftermath, first responders unaware of the invisible enemy they were facing rushed to the scene. Firefighters battled the blaze, their equipment woefully inadequate against the radioactive fire. Plant workers scrambled to assess the damage, their confusion and fear palpable. The explosion was just the beginning. The following radioactive fallout was akin to an invisible silent snowfall, blanketing the surrounding areas with deadly particles. The wind carried this invisible specter far and wide, reaching well beyond the borders of the Soviet Union. In the nearby town of Pripyat, life carried on, oblivious to the disaster unfolding just a few kilometers away. Children played in the streets, families sat down for breakfast all under the invisible rain of radioactive fallout. It would take a full 36 hours before the order to evacuate the town was given. This was not just an explosion, it was the release of a silent deadly force into our world. A force that does not respect borders, does not discriminate, and whose effects are felt long after the initial blast. The world watched in stunned disbelief as the scale of the disaster began to emerge. This was the beginning of a catastrophe that would send shockwaves around the world. As the clock struck 1.23 am, Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded. This was not just an ordinary night in Pripyat, a city in the Soviet Union. A safety test was in progress at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, specifically on Reactor Number 4. The goal was to determine how the cooling pump system would respond to a loss of power a seemingly ordinary procedure that would soon prove to be far from routine. The test was meant to simulate a station blackout power failure, with safety systems intentionally turned off. A minute before the explosion the reactor's power unexpectedly dropped to a near-zero level. The operators decided to increase the reactor's power but they went too far. The reactor's design flaws were exposed when it reached unstable, low-power conditions. A combination of the reactor's unstable design and the operator's inadequate training led to a dramatic power surge. The emergency shutdown failed to prevent the disaster. The power surge caused fuel particles to vaporize which increased the reactor's pressure to a point of no return. Suddenly, all hell broke loose. The reactor's lid, weighing 1,000 tons, was blown off. Intense amounts of radiation were released into the atmosphere. A second explosion, just seconds later, spewed out additional radioactive particles. The immediate aftermath was chaos. The plant's workers scrambled to understand what had happened. The fire brigade rushed to the scene, unaware of the invisible enemy they were about to face, lethal doses of radiation. The explosion and subsequent fires released large amounts of radioactive particles into the atmosphere, which spread over much of western USSR and Europe. In the blink of an eye, Chernobyl had become a nuclear wasteland. Radiation invisible and deadly began to seep into the environment. The Chernobyl disaster was not just an explosion, it was a silent killer, a poison that spread far beyond the confines of the reactor. As the days passed, an invisible enemy, radiation, began to invade the air, the water, the soil. The nearby city of Pripyat, home to many of the plant's workers and their families, lived in ignorance of the looming threat for an astonishing 36 hours post-disaster. The Soviet authorities delayed the evacuation, underestimating the severity of the situation. When the evacuation order finally came, it was abrupt and panic-ridden. People were given just a few hours to pack their lives into a suitcase, under the false promise that they would return in a few days. That return never happened. Radiation doesn't discriminate. It affected everyone it touched. Men, women, children, even the unborn. The health effects were immediate in some, delayed in others. Acute radiation sickness claimed the lives of two plant workers on the night of the disaster, and 28 more would succumb over the next few months. However, the true death toll is much higher, as many suffered from long-term health effects such as cancer, 
birth defects and other radiation-induced illnesses. Yet, amidst this gloom, there were beacons of bravery and sacrifice. The first responders, the firefighters, the plant workers who rushed in to contain the disaster, knowing little of the invisible enemy they were up against. These were the men who walked into a radioactive inferno, many of whom would pay the ultimate price for their heroism. These stories, these lives are etched in the annals of history. They serve as a stark reminder of the human cost of technological failure, of the invisible enemy that is radiation, and of the bravery of those who faced it head on. The ghost town of Pripyat remains a haunting reminder of the disaster's devastating impact. Today the abandoned buildings, the empty streets, the silent playgrounds, stand as a testament to a tragedy that changed the course of history and left an indelible mark on humanity. The battle to contain the radiation was a Herculean task, one that required the sacrifice of many. The aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster demanded an extraordinary response. The Soviet Union mobilized hundreds of thousands of workers, known as liquidators, to combat the invisible enemy, radiation. These brave individuals were tasked with the daunting challenge of cleaning up the radioactive debris and constructing a containment structure around the reactor. Imagine the scale of this operation. It's like trying to build a fortress around a dragon while it's still breathing fire. The dragon, in this case, was the reactor, spewing out lethal amounts of radiation. The liquidators, equipped with little more than basic tools and rudimentary protective gear, worked tirelessly amidst the lethal radiation. They removed and buried heavily contaminated materials. They scrubbed down and decontaminated streets, buildings, and vehicles. Their labor was both physical and psychological, as they grappled with the invisible terror of radiation. Then came the construction of the sarcophagus, a giant concrete and steel structure designed to encase the damaged reactor and limit the release of radioactive particles into the atmosphere. You could think of it as a giant somber tombstone, a silent testament to the disaster and the efforts to contain it. But the cost was high. Many of the liquidators were exposed to high levels of radiation, leading to acute radiation sickness, and significantly increasing the risk of cancer and other health complications. Yet, they pressed on, driven by a sense of duty and the desperate need to prevent further disaster. These efforts, though successful in containing much of the radiation, were not without their consequences. The health and environmental impacts of the cleanup continue to be felt today, more than four decades on. The scars of Chernobyl are etched not only on the land, but in the hearts of those who fought to contain it. This chapter in our history serves as a stark reminder of the potential cost of nuclear energy when things go wrong and of the bravery and sacrifice of those who step up in times of crisis. Over three decades later the shadow of Chernobyl still looms large. This catastrophic event has left a lasting imprint on the world, its effects echoing through the years and across generations. The health repercussions have been particularly devastating. A significant uptick in cancer rates, particularly thyroid cancer, has been observed among those exposed to the radioactive fallout. Thousands of lives have been irrevocably altered as a result of this disaster, the human cost a tragic testament to the dangers of nuclear energy mishandled. Yet, the story of Chernobyl does not end there. The ongoing containment efforts remain a monumental task. The new safe confinement, an impressive feat of engineering, now encases the reactor, a steel shell designed to keep the remaining radioactive materials in check for at least a century. This immense structure stands as a testament to humanity's resilience and ingenuity in the face of adversity. Interestingly, nature has found a way to adapt in the face of this disaster. The exclusion zone, once a bustling hub of human activity, has transformed into an unexpected wildlife reserve. This area, devoid of human interference, has become a refuge for animals like wolves, deer, and even endangered Przewalski's horses. Chernobyl, a name synonymous with disaster, serves as a stark reminder of the cost of nuclear power gone wrong. It's a poignant lesson in the balance of technological progress and environmental responsibility, a story of human error, resilience, and nature's surprising adaptability. The story of Chernobyl is one of tragedy, heroism, and the indomitable spirit of humanity. From the devastating disaster that shook the world, to the immediate aftermath that tested our resilience, to the monumental cleanup efforts that showcased our determination, and finally, to the lasting impact that echoes in our world today. Chernobyl is a stark reminder of our past. Before we sign off, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, keep exploring the annals of history and remember, the past is never truly gone.